in this circuit diagram. Okay, the first thing we always do when solving a physics problem is to draw a picture. But with the circuit already drawn, we just need to apply a few labels. We'll label the positive and negative side of the battery, as well as the junctions. And if we had more room on the circuit diagram, we'd also label the unknown currents. But we'll come back to those in a little bit. Now before we take a crack at this circuit, I recommend that we replace this empty leg with a dummy resistor, a zero ohm placeholder that will make our analysis a little simpler. This step isn't necessary for seasoned veterans of circuit analysis, but I find it to be helpful for beginners. Alright, to analyze a combination circuit, we'll use what I call the break it down, build it up method. We'll break the circuit down piece by piece, determining equivalent resistances until we have a single equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. Then, we'll build it back up piece by piece using Ohm's law until the voltage across and current through each resistor has been determined. Okay, let's break it down now. Break it down now. We'll start by redrawing the circuit so that series and parallel relationships are readily apparent. We'll write first redraw because there will be quite a few. The basic idea for our first redraw is to convert our circuit diagram, which has kind of this loopy current path, clockwise from positive to negative, into a unidirectional one, left to right. I find it useful to imagine grabbing the positive side of the battery with your left hand, and the negative side with your right, then breaking the battery apart, and stretching the circuit out onto the page below. So we put the positive side of the battery here on the left, and translate the rest of the circuit. After leaving the positive side of the battery, the current encounters the 100 ohm resistor first, so we'll write that here. And thereafter, the current encounters junction 1. There's a three-way split at junction 1, which means these legs are in parallel, so we'll draw them geometrically parallel below. So this top leg has a 50 ohm resistor, and a 250 ohm resistor follows it, so they're in series. And the top leg terminates right here, at junction 2. There's another leg that begins at junction 1 and terminates at junction 2, and it comprises this devilish diagonal resistor. Despite its menacing appearance, this resistor is just connected in parallel with the top leg, so we'll draw it simply spanning the gap between the two junctions below. After junction 2, we have this bottom leg with our 0 ohm resistor. We'll put that to the right of junction 2 here. And then we get to junction 3. Between junction 1 and junction 3 is a single 300 ohm resistor, so it is in parallel with the four previously drawn resistors. We'll depict this by dangling one long leg from junction 1 and junction 3. Finally, following junction 3, we have a single 150 ohm resistor leading us home to the negative side of the battery. So we draw the 150 ohm resistor here, and finish with the negative side of the battery on the right. And that, my friends, is our first redraw. You can see what I meant by breaking the circuit apart and stretching it onto the page. Now we can easily determine our first equivalent resistance. We'll start with the resistors that are furthest from the battery and determine their equivalent resistance. So working inward from the positive and negative sides, we find that the 50 and 250 ohm resistors fit the bill. If you're ever unsure where to start, resistors in series are always a good bet. So the equivalent resistance for these two resistors is 50 ohms plus 250 ohms, which equals 300 ohms. This is how we calculate equivalent resistance for resistors in series, simply sum their individual resistances. And this brings us to our second redraw. We'll redraw the entire circuit, but in place of the 50 ohm and 250 ohm resistors, we'll draw a 300 ohm resistor, like so. Once we finish our second redraw, we again turn our attention to the circuit diagram and determine the resistors furthest from the battery. Moving inward from the sides of the battery, we find that these two resistors are the next to be combined. We calculate their equivalent resistance differently because they're not in series, but in parallel with one another. So for our 300 and 200 ohm resistors, REQ equals 1 divided by 1 over 300 ohms plus 1 over 200 ohms, which equals 120 ohms. So, for resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. Okay, moving on to our third redraw. Here we'll have the same circuit as depicted in the second redraw, except that we replace the 300 and 200 ohm resistors with their resistive equivalent, a single 120 ohm resistor. Starting to get the hang of this? 
If not, don't panic. We've got a couple more redraws with which to practice before we're done breaking it down. So which resistors are next? You guessed it, the two that are in series. So we just add their resistances together. Not a very exciting equivalent resistance, I admit, but note that junction 2 will not be present in our fourth redraw. So we wash, rinse, repeat, replacing these two resistors with their resistive equivalent. And perhaps by now you've identified the next resistors to be combined. The two in parallel right here. So for their equivalent resistance, we'll have 1 over 1 over 120 ohms plus 1 over 300 ohms, which yields 86 ohms. Again, we redraw the circuit, this time replacing the two parallel resistors between junction 1 and junction 3 with our 86 ohm resistor. This redraw leaves us with three resistors to combine. They're in series, so we just sum their resistances, which yields an equivalent resistance of 336 ohms. Which brings us to our final redraw. We've reduced our initial six resistors to a single equivalent resistance, which means we're done breaking it down. If we bend our circuit back together, reconnecting the positive and negative sides of the battery, it should be clear that we're left with our old ohmic friend, the simple circuit. And as far as the battery is concerned, that's all there ever was. No matter the circuit's configuration, the battery only sees an equivalent resistance and supplies the circuit with a corresponding current. How the circuit divvies up this current depends on the configuration. So we'll label the current leaving and re-entering the battery as I0. See, I told you we'd come back to drawing our currents. And now we'll determine a value for I0 using Ohm's law. We write V equals IR, which will solve for I, which in this situation gives us I0 equals the source voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. Inserting our values, we find that I0 equals 54 milliamps. Eureka! A value for current leaving and re-entering the battery marks the halfway point in our analysis, which means it's time to build it up now. Build up now. To build our circuit back up to its original configuration, we'll move through our series of redraws in retrograde, determining the values for voltage across and current through each resistor as we go. So we begin building it up by revisiting our fifth redraw. By the way, I'm redrawing my redraws here, hence the little two, for the sake of neatness. But to save on time and paper at home, just simply mark up your old redraws. Okay, we know that I0 passes through the resistor, representing the equivalent resistance of these three resistors. And since there's only one path for the current, we know that I0 must pass through each of the three resistors. In other words, series resistors experience the same current, but provided the resistance values differ, they experience different voltages. Knowing the current through the resistors, we can now determine the voltage across them using Ohm's law. So for the 100 ohm resistor, we apply Ohm's law and we get the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor equals the current through the resistor, which is I0, that's 0.054 amperes, times the resistance of the resistor, which is of course 100 ohms. This yields a voltage drop across the resistor of 5.4 volts. Now for the 86 ohm resistor, V equals I, that's 0.054 amps, times R, 86 ohms, which equals 4.6 volts. And for the 150 ohm resistor, 0.054 amps times 150 ohms, which equals 8.1 volts. Now at this point, we could determine the power dissipation for the two outer resistors, but we'll just wait to calculate power until the end of the problem when we tabulate our solutions. Next, we revisit our fourth redraw, where in junctions one and three are actual circuit junctions, where three or more paths come together. Here we have I0 splitting up into two currents at junction one. What do we know about resistors in parallel? Well, we know they'll have the same voltage, but so long as they have differing resistances, they'll have different currents. And so we'll label the currents here I1 and I2. To determine values for I1 and I2, we'll use Ohm's law. But first we need voltages for these two resistors. We know that the voltage drop across the 86 ohm resistor is 4.6 volts. And since it represents parallel resistors, that means the voltage drop across each resistor is the same, 4.6 volts. And we'll box up this result to save for our solutions table. Solving Ohm's law for current, we determine that the current through the 120 ohm resistor, that is to say I1, equals 0.038 amps. 
Similar calculation for the 300 ohm resistor yields a value of 0.015 amps for I2. Now to our third redraw. Here the 120 ohm resistor expands in a rather unexciting way. Out pops a goose egg resistor. <laughs> I0 doesn't change. I1 passes through both the 120 ohm and 0 ohm resistor. And I2 is the same. We'll run the calculations for the sake of posterity with the unsurprising result that the voltage drop over the 0 ohm resistor is 0 volts. Onward and upward, or backward, depending on how you look at this method. In our second redraw, we have an additional leg of this circuit, which means we need additional currents. Again, I0 and I2 don't change, but I1 is now divided between the 300 ohm and 200 ohm resistors here. So we'll call this one I3 and this one I4. To get values for I3 and I4, we'll use, you guessed it, Ohm's Law. We need voltages first, but because they're in parallel, they have identical voltages to the resistor representing their equivalent resistance. That's 4.6 volts. We'll box that up for the 200 ohm resistor. And we determine current values using this voltage. So I3 is 0 0.015 amps, and I4 is 0 0.023 amps. Got the hang of this? Good. Now back to our first redraw. By the way, you'll likely be studying circuits with multiple power sources soon. And when you do, you'll need another circuit analysis tool, namely Kirchhoff's rules. Subscribe to my channel now, and when you need help with Kirchhoff's, come on back. Okay, I0 hasn't changed, so we'll draw that first. The current through this top leg containing the 50 ohm and 250 ohm resistors, that's I3 here. And the 200 ohm resistor is associated with I4. The current through the bottom leg, that's I2. And it looks like we forgot to label the current through the dummy resistor in our last redraw. That's just I1. So the final pieces of our circuit puzzle are the voltages across the 50 ohm and 250 ohm resistors. Again, it's just Ohm's law using the known current through the resistors. In this case, 0.015 amps, which yields a voltage of 0.75 volts for the 50 ohm resistor and 3.75 volts for the 250 ohm resistor. And with values for all of the currents and voltages, we're done building it back up. Now we'll generate a solutions table and calculate power dissipation for each resistor. With voltage and current in adjacent columns, power is a cinch to calculate. Recall that power dissipation for a resistor is equal to the product of the current and voltage. So we just multiply 0.75 volts and 0.015 amps, and we get 11 milliwatts for the 50 ohm resistor. For the 100 ohm resistor, we multiply 5.4 volts and 0.054 amps, and we get 0.292 watts. We'll fill in the table for the other resistors, collecting solutions from our re-redraws, and determining power dissipation as we go. And that is how you break it down and build it up. I'm Jesse Mason. I hope this video shed some light on series and parallel resistive circuits. If you'd like to make a suggestion for a future Teach Me video, or just want to say hello from your part of the world, please do so in the comments section below. And as always, happy learning. learn how to find the what we call the equivalent resistance how to find the current in the circuit and how we find the current in each branch of the circuit as well as the voltage drop across each resistor and a lot of that has to do with knowing how to take a resistor circuit and simplifying it down to a single equivalent resistor for the entire circuit and so we're also going to have some videos that will show you how to actually do that with some more complicated circuits as well. So let's start with this one, which is a fairly straightforward one. So what we have here is we have two parallel branches and they're hooked up in series. And series means that one is hooked up after the other and any current flowing to the circuit has to go through both branches. That's how we know the branches are in series. And since current could split up into two directions here, that's how we know that these are in parallel. So what we're going to do is to figure out how much current is flowing to the circuit. So that's one of the questions. I equals question mark. And then we're going to figure out I in each branch and also how much voltage drop there is across all the resistors. So the V sub R is equal to question mark. So the sub R means the voltage across the resistor. 
All right. In order to accomplish that, we're going to have to simplify these, the circuit. So we have to find what we call equivalent resistors. And usually how that's done is by slowly going from the most complicated situation to a more simple situation by combining resistors and replacing them by a single equivalent resistor. So the first thing we're going to do, and let me get a different color, we're going to take these two, resistor, uh, these two resistors right here, combine them into a single resistor. We're going to take those two resistors, combine them into a single resistor. And since they are in, in uh, parallel, the way to do that, you could say that 1 over R total, or the equivalent resistance, so we use either total or equivalent, kind of synonymously. So 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. If there's only two resistors, there's actually an easier equation we can use. We can say that R total is equal to the product over the sum, which is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So using this technique, we have the two resistors, so we have 6 times 2. Notice how I don't write the ohm sign because it makes it cleaner and easier to work with. Divided by 6 plus 2, which is equal to 12 divided by 8, which is equal to, looks like, uh, Three halves, right? That goes, yep, so three halves. So our equivalent resistance of these two resistors together is three halves. So we could take this, these two resistors away, replace it by a single resistor that is three halves of ohm, and you get electrically exactly the same response. So our new, our new circuit will look like this, with the first resistor replaced by a three over two ohm resistor. There we go. Now the second one, we do the same thing. We use those two resistors, so we have our total is equal to uh, R3 times R4 divided by R3 plus R4. So again, it's the product over the sum. That would be uh, 12 times 6 divided by 12 plus 6. That would be 72 divided by 18. And that goes, 18 goes 72 exactly four times. All right, so we replace the second resistor by a 4 ohm resistor. We still have our battery. The battery had a potential difference across it of 55 volts. All right, so now we went from this circuit to this circuit. This resistor is the same as these two in parallel. This resistor is the same as those two in parallel. But we're not done yet. Now we have two resistors in series. And of course, when you add uh, resistors in series, you simply add them up. So here you could say our total equals R, well, let's call this R5 and R6. Those are the equivalent resistors, so it would be R5 plus R6 because these are series resistors. They're in series one after the other. Again, any current going through the circuit has to go through both resistors. There's no choice. That means they're in series. And so in this case, we simply say uh, 1.5 ohms because 3 has is 1.5 plus 4 ohms. And so that would be a total of 5.5 ohms. All right, so we can now replace this circuit with an even simpler equivalent circuit. Like so, we have now a single battery with a single equivalent resistance, so R equivalent, EQ for equivalent, is now equal to 5.5 ohms, and the battery is equal to 55 volts of potential difference across the battery. All right, so now, electrically, if you had, for example, a black box with two leads sticking out, and you went in and probed around trying to figure out what the current, the voltage, and the resistance is, you would get this result and you couldn't tell if you're talking about or working with a, a, a circuit that looks like this or with a circuit that looked like that. Electrically, they're identical. So now we can use Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that the current in any circuit is equal to the uh, voltage across the circuit divided by the resistance. So in this case, that would be the total or equivalent resistance. This is 55 volts divided by 5.5 ohms, which is equal to 10 amps which now means that the current in the circuit is 10 amps, which means that the current flowing through the circuit this way, I equals 10 amps. That's the total current. Now the next step, we want to go ahead and try to figure out how much current flows through each branch. So we can see that there's going to be current going in the upper branch and current going down the upper, lower branch. Kind of like a river. When a river gets to a place where there's an island in the middle of the river, some of the water goes to the left, some of the water goes to the right, and more water goes to the side where there's less resistance, less water goes to the side where there's more resistance. So where you have more resistance, less current will go. We have less resistance, more current will go. Since there is three times as much resistance as you see over here, there only will be one third of the current going to the top branch and uh, compared to the current going to the low branch. But how do you actually figure that out? How do you actually calculate how much current 
goes through each branch. Well, if you call this the total current, I told us 10 amps, then for the top, I going to the top, that's going to be equal to I total, the amount of current coming in, times the following ratio. In the numerator, you write the resistance of the other branch. So we're trying to figure out the current in the top branch. You write the resistance of the lower branch divided by the sum of the two resistors, 2 plus 6. That will give you the current in the top side of that circuit. So this will be equal to 10 amps times 2 over 8, which is a quarter, which is equal to 2.5 amps. So this means that 2.5 amps goes to the top branch, which of course, if there's a total of 10 and 2.5 goes this way, you'd expect 7.5 to go this way. Again, we can figure out using the, the equation I at the bottom is equal to I total times, now you take the resistance of the other branch, now we want to know the current through here, and so what we're going to do is take the resistor of the other branch divided by the total. And so this is equal to 10 amps times 6 divided by 8, which is equal to 7.5 amps. So you can see how nice that works. That equation works really nice when you have a branch with just two resistors like that. We can do the same for the second branch. Notice that the two currents then come back together. Over here you'll have 10 amps again. Notice the top branch, I at the top, will be 2.5 amps, and I at the bottom, bottom will be 7.5 amps. They come together, forms 10 amps again, and now the current will split up again over here. And again, how do you figure out what the current will be? Well, you go I at the top, is equal to the 10 amps coming into the branch and now you, since we're trying to figure out the I at the top we take the resistance of the other side which is 6 divided by the sum of the two which is 6 plus 12 so that would be equal to 10 amps times that would be 6 over 18 which is 1 third which is equal to 3.33 amps okay 6 divided by 18 is 1 third and then we do it for the bottom I at the bottom is equal to 10 amps times the resistance in the other branch. So now we're trying to find the current in the lower branch. So we take the resistance of the upper branch, 12 divided by the sum of the two, 6 plus 12. And so 12 divided by 18 is 2 thirds. So that would be 10 amps times 2 thirds, which would be equal to 6.67 amps rounded off. You can see that the two together add up to 10 amps. Then they come back together, and then it's 10 amps again. All right. Now, how do we figure out the voltage drop across each of these resistors? So if we want to know the voltage drop across R1, hmm, I'm running out of room here, but let me just put it right at the bottom. So the voltage across R1 is equal to question mark. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that I equals V over R. So if we take this equation and solve for V, we can then say that V equals I times R. So all we have to do is take the current in that branch and multiply it times the resistance. So V through R1 is equal to the current through R1. And the current through R1 was 2.5 amps. And the, uh, the resistance, 6 ohms. So that would be 6 times 2.5, which is 15 volts. So that tells us the voltage drop across the top resistor there, R1, is 15 volts. Now, we know that across any parallel branch, the voltages have to be the same, so we expect the voltage here to be 15 volts as well, but again, we can figure that out. So we have voltage across R2 is equal to, we take the current through R2, which was 7.5 amps, 7.5 amps, and the resistance of R2, which is 2 ohms, you can see that will be 15 volts as well, just like we expected. All right, we can do that again for the second branch, or we can be kind of smart about it. Think about that the total voltage drop across the circuit has to be 55 volts. The battery provides a voltage increase of 55 volts, and then the volts will drop across the two branches. So if we have a voltage drop across here of 15 volts from this point to this point, and sometimes I just kind of denote it like that, that says that the voltage drop between these two points is 15 volts, then what drops across here? Well, that must be the remainder, 55 minus 15. My guess would be, then, then, would be that this would be a 40 volt drop. And just to make sure that we did it correctly, let's find out the drop across this one right here. Notice that I at the top 
right here was 3.33 amps. So I at the top for this branch was equal to 3.33 amps. And so therefore we can say that the voltage across R3 is equal to I times R, right? Voltage is I times R. So we take the current, 3.33 amps, and we multiply the times the resistance of that branch, which is 12 ohms. And so what is that all together? That would be 33 times 6.8, and indeed, that is exactly 40 volts. So you can see, you can do it that way as well. So here's a nice, very nice example. We have parallel and series combination resistors. We find first the equivalent resistance, first the equivalent resistance of each branch, then the total equivalent resistance for the circuit. That allows us to find the current in the circuit using Ohm's law, I equals total voltage divided by total resistance, 10 amps. We now take the 10 amps and try to figure out how much current goes through each branch. We have that very nice nifty equation for the current at the top is the total current, the 10 amps coming in, times the ratio of the resistance of the other branch divided by the total resistance, the two sum together. We do that for each branch and we find the current in each case for all four branches like that. And then finally, to find the voltage across each uh, resistor, we know from Ohm's law that V is I times R, the current through the resistor times the resistance. So here in our example, we take the current through the resistor times the resistance, gives us the voltage drop. And remember that whenever the battery gives you in voltage, this is a step up in voltage. When you go around the circuit, you go back down to the beginning where you started. And sometimes we put a look, like a little reference clause in there saying, if we call this zero volts, and this would be at 55 volts. We come around here, we drop, as we noticed, 15 volts. So we go from 55 down to 40 volts. And then from this point out to go to there, you go back to zero volts, back to ground, and back across the battery and so forth. And that's how you do that problem.